Today is one of my favorite days because it's really about mindset and is your negative mindset destroying your health? And I'm not here to convince you that you must think positively because I'm sure we hear that all the time. And I'm really here to share that negative thinking is real and negative thinking works. So sometimes telling someone to think positively can be a turnoff. And when you're going through challenges and difficult times, the last thing you want to hear is think positive. And I know that because sometimes I'm in that situation. And the phrase alone, although meant with good intention, the person telling you that is not trying to push any harm, but sometimes it can be taken as insensitive when you just tell someone to be positive because you may be even thinking to yourself right now, you know, how can I be positive when I'm struggling with my finances? There's nothing positive about that. And how can I be positive when I'm overweight and I'm in pain every day and it's a struggle to get out of bed every morning and it's a struggle to do the things that I used to do? And how can someone tell me to be positive when I have family issues going on that just deters me from my day-to-day -day life and what I could do every day and I can't focus on the things that I want to because of all the struggles I'm dealing with? And how can I be positive when I have a job that causes me to work long hours and I hate going to my job every day. You know, what's positive about that, you may ask. And you may be thinking that right now. So the truth is, the only other choice you have is to be negative. And negative thinking is powerful. It can be used, it sounds a little extreme, but it's true because it really can be used essentially as a weapon. So Rather than me telling you, you know, negative thinking is powerful, I want to review some data that I found very interesting. I was listening to a podcast, which I'm going to share below as well, um, and that's really what all of this is. It's really a summary of what I was listening to, um, what I was watching, because I was like, wow, I have to share this with more people because it's powerful, and I realized how well it relates to me day to day. So spoken words, the words we speak are extremely powerful. So when you say something out loud, it is 10 times more powerful than if you think it. And what's even more interesting is negativity is a multiple, which means it is four to seven times more powerful than positivity. So not only do the words we speak 10x, when they're uh, spoken out loud. But if they're negative, they're actually four to seven times more powerful. It's like, whoa, what? Um, so negative things that are spoken are 40 to 70 times more likely to happen or cause a negative result than if you were to say nothing at all. So I'm actually gonna say that again. Negative things that are spoken are 40 to 70 times more likely to happen or cause a negative result than if you were to say nothing at all. Sometimes we say things out loud without knowing that it even has a negative effect on us or that it's going to have a negative result because sometimes we just go day to day and just say things. Um, you know, all the times, you know, and all the times I've heard and, you know, maybe you even said the words, you know, I'm fat. I hate what I look like. I'm always going to feel this way. Nothing ever goes my way. I'm such a failure. You know, these things that we just say out loud, out loud, they have an impact on how we feel. And it also has an impact on what we do. So if you're someone who often speaks out loud without realizing the negative consequences, you may be wondering, okay, how can I stop? You know, what should I do next so that I'm not just going day to day, just blurting things out that's actually affecting me negatively? So believe it or not, you're probably thinking I'm going to give you a list of things that you can do, a list of things that you can say that are more positive. So I'm actually not here to tell you to think positively, although you probably have expected me to give you that answer. But I'm actually here to share a simple tip on how to stop having the negative thoughts destroy your health, your progress, and essentially your entire life. 
Um, and what that tip is, and it's simple, but it's to refrain from speaking the negative. I always used to say, be positive or be quiet, but it's true. So if you think it, even if you think a negative, keep it silent. Don't vocalize it. Don't say it. Do not complain about a negative. You can do this with just about literally everything in your day. And I know I even get caught in doing this and I'm, I've actually, I'm making, you know, a list of things not to do. So you can complain about the weather, right? So don't complain about the weather. Don't complain about how tired you are or how slow your day is going or how horrible your day is going. Because if you do, it's just going to make things worse. Because if you feel as if you aren't making progress, your health is getting worse and you're not making any progress, don't verbalize it. Just keep it to yourself. And I say this lightly because when you speak things, it doesn't magically just cause things to happen where you could just be like, oh, I'm going to win a million dollars and you win a million dollars. But when you do speak things, it increases the probability of it happening when it's a negative because we learned that it has a 40 to 70 times more likely effect. So to lower the probability of anything negative, you want to avoid speaking the negative. That doesn't mean you won't think them because you're going to have the doubt still. The doubt will always be there, but you don't want to externalize it. And by not externalizing it, you actually choose not to take ownership of it. And I think this is really where everything kind of comes full, full circle and is really life-changing if you do start applying this. Because once you stop taking ownership of the negative, you can actually then choose to change your behavior. In one way to practice positivity that is more powerful than actually speaking it, believe it or not, is through our behavior. So what you do not what you feel is what will change your future and your results so you you know that phrase as you know act as if so you can feel all sorts of things you can feel unmotivated you could feel tired you can feel depressed you can feel fatigued you can feel overwhelmed but if you change your behaviors to mimic what you want to be you'll actually start to become exactly that Literally act as if, fake it, it till you make it kind of thing. Because we always have control over our behavior, no matter the difficulty, no matter the challenges or the struggles that we're going through, we always, always could change our behavior. So even if the situation is not optimal, there will always be something that you can do, always. And there are tons of studies and examples of people who spoke themselves into a situation they didn't actually want to end up in. And there are also stories of people who did quite the opposite. So that's why I actually think, you know, when I was watching this video, I wanted to share it because it was really powerful. And when I watched this video on this topic, so many things shouted out to me because I actually do these things without even noticing. Because I have a strong belief on the power of words. And biblically, words are everything. God spoke the world into existence. When you speak his word, it never really goes void. And that alone convinces me that, wow, words are strong, words are powerful, and they, they really work both ways. So sometimes I fall into the trap of always thinking or always making things positive and looking on the bright side. Because I always... Um, I always prefer to look at the good rather than the bad. And sometimes um, people do say things like, oh, you're always so positive or, oh, you know, we can't always be positive like you or, oh, think logically for a second. Or, you know, when you say something about just being positive, you know, it does come off insensitive sometimes, but I don't do it to be insensitive because I've seen in my own life how much better it is to either look at the good and stay, or if it's not good, just to stay quiet. So even when bad comes up or tough issues come up, I try not to talk about them as much. Something that I know that I don't really want to come to fruition, I'm just going to make sure I'm going to be quiet about it. 
and I'm not going to harp on it. And maybe I'll talk good about the situation instead. And sometimes it's so far off and people are like, no, Danny, like this is happening. And I'm like, no, no, it's good. You know, I had to uh, reschedule my wedding four times. And I will tell you the week before, you know, the first reschedule during COVID and the quarantine in April, I was like, it's good. We're still going. And people are like, Danae, like you're going to have to reschedule. But the people were saying that weeks and weeks prior and you know, whatever the situation, we still had to reschedule, but I didn't want to speak it. I didn't want to make it even more real. And it made me feel better just looking at the good rather than the bad and accepting it even if we had to. So I wanted to actually share a testimony of mine that I never actually even shared before. It's the first time ever sharing it. And after watching the podcast, I was like, wow, like I can actually totally relate to this because I did this not even knowing that I was doing it. Um, but because I didn't want to make you know, the, the matter exaggerated. And I do the same thing even when I get sick and get a cold or something. Like I ignore it. I don't even tell people about it like because I don't want to take ownership of it. And about seven years ago, I was diagnosed with PCOS. And if you ever went to a doctor and been told that or know anyone that has it, the beginning of the story is going to sound very familiar because the doctor essentially tells you there is no way for you to get rid of PCOS. It is something that you just have to live with for the rest of your life. And you can potentially have issues giving birth, but, you know, they'll cross that path when the time comes. And I remember leaving that office a little bit disappointed in the news and what they were saying. And an entire year goes by, I remember, and I did nothing about the PCOS. Like, zippity doo da, nothing at all, because I was told you can't do anything about it. So why? I didn't even really think about trying or changing anything at all. So a year goes by, I go to a different doctor who tells me the same thing. Oh, you have state, you know, PCOS, stay on birth control and you'll be good. Now, at that exact time, I was actually diagnosed with candida and leaky gut syndrome. And this is when I started studying more and more about the body and our health and nutrition and more holistic living and how powerful, you know, what we do to our body, how we can heal ourselves. You know, I was always against kind of like the medical route. Um, obviously, if you break an arm, go to a doctor. But if you have a cold, there's other ways for you to get over a cold. So I started learning a little bit more about PCOS because it started coming up on a lot of things that I was studying. And I started looking at nutrition and I was... I knew I needed to get off birth control because I was going to do everything I possibly could to get better. Now, I was told that in order to kind of make the PCOS better, you have to um, stay on birth control because birth control is what helps you regulate your periods and yada, yada, yada. So I hardly, I got off birth control. Um, I started you know, studying what I had to do to heal my leaky gut and heal my candida. And I kind of like put the PCOS in the back seat. And I hardly ever, 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 ever spoke about my PCOS to anyone. Um, and really, which is interesting, which I'll touch on a little bit further, but my biggest concern was healing my candida and my leaky gut. I never took ownership of PCOS. I never told anyone I really had it. Um, my mom knew about it, but it was really kind of brushed under, under the rug. And I didn't even want to act as if I had it. So, you know, fast forward to about a year later, I go to the doctor, I get checked, no PCOS. And I thought the doctor was lying. I was like, are you sure? Because I knew I had it. And I brought it up to him. I'm like, oh, I have PCOS. And he's like, oh, like you, you don't have PCOS. So I have two doctors that told me I had it and I would, and it would never go away. Um, and they said, you know, you have no signs of it. So me being me, I went back to the original doctor who told me I had PCOS, got checked, turned out no PCOS. So why am I telling this story? My PCOS didn't go away by a miracle. My PCOS went away because I never took ownership of it. And I never took ownership of it. And I changed my behavior to match that. I did everything in my power to make my body healthy. I didn't start following a plan to live with PCOS because that's what they give you. What to do when you have PCOS? You know, some of my doctors wanted me to, you know, meet, you know, follow the protocol. And I refused to do it because I was like, oh, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to do my own thing. And I'm going to get my candida, my leaky gut better. And it took me a long time to actually get my hormones in a good place. I will tell you that. It wasn't something that was easy, but it was something that can be done. And you can't get your hormones in a good place when you are on birth control. 
which is the solution that every doctor gave me and probably gives you. So I saw firsthand the effect of literally living your life as if, following the behavior of what you want, not how you feel. There were days where I struggled. I was fatigued. I was tired. I was achy. And I just kept doing the same things I knew that would better me. And I never spoke of the things that I didn't want because you don't want to take ownership of those things. And I did the exact same thing with my thyroid. Every single time I went to my doctor, my thyroid levels were getting worse and worse. They were literally dropping. I was looking at it right in front of my eyes. And my doctor, you know, recommended me for me to go on medication. I said, no, thank you. I never spoke really about my thyroid issue to people. I never really took ownership of that either because instead I just figured out ways to incorporate things in my day to day for healthy thyroid health. It was spoken about, but not, not crazy where I was like, oh, I have thyroid imbalances and I'm going to have to live like this forever. And I literally 10 x my protocol. I incorporated all the thyroid healing foods that you could possibly imagine. I incorporated all these supplements and oils and herbs and whole foods and fruits and veggies. And I just made that part of my routine. And I remember going back to my doctor after doing all this and my thyroid levels were still bad. They got worse. <laughs> and I was like, wow, like I was sure I didn't want to go on medicine. He kept asking me and I just didn't want to do it. Fast forward two years later and I've never been better. Why? Because I changed my, de my behavior despite how I felt and what I was being told. So it works and people will think, wow, you're crazy, you know, but if you have that unwavering feeling of just chasing the behavior you want, you will always end up where you want to be. And now, which I, which is funny because on the flip side of this entire story, I'm also not the best at this, which is why it took me a very long time to heal my candida and my leaky gut because every single person I came in contact with knew I had candida and knew I had leaky gut because of, I was always, you know, eating differently, following new protocols. And I shared my story with literally everyone I came in contact with. I knocked doors at the time, and I think every single person that I made a sale with, sale with knew I had gut health issues, candida. Like, I took ownership of that sickness to the fullest, and boy, oh boy, let me tell you, my sickness got worse and worse sometimes, even when I was getting stricter and stricter with the diet. So I'm not here to tell you to disregard everything your doctor tells you. If you have to get your gallbladder out because you have an issue, obviously you need to take it out. If you have a kidney issue, you need to get a kidney out. I'm not telling you not to do it because you can speak your way into it. But I am telling you that you can change your behavior to match where you want to go despite how you feel. And I'm, you know, not, I, I'm here to, to tell you that negative thinking you know, leads to negative spoken words and negative spoken words is real and it works. And your behavior has a lot to do with where you end up. So I want to leave you with this because at the end of the day, if you do try this, you have literally nothing to lose. So instead of thinking you can do, um, you know, instead of thinking things that you can do, I want you to start thinking about the things you won't do. You know, stop saying stupid things out loud. Don't say stupid things out loud. You know, be extremely careful about what you consume, what you watch, what you listen to. Don't take ownership of things you don't want to become. So don't make a to-do list. Make a don't-do list. Like, I literally have a don't-do list on in my brain right now, a few things that I know that I've been speaking that are actually negative. And I'm like, hmm, why am I saying this? Even though I don't want to be there, speaking it makes it real. So I want you to ask yourself these three questions. What do you want? Why do you want it? And why don't you have it? And think about that because when you answer the question of why you don't have it, you actually may be speaking negative limiting beliefs just to begin with. So I actually attached the link below of the podcast that I watched and what I just summarized on this video. I highly recommend watching it because it's really amazing. I got a lot of value out of it. If you liked this video and you did find some value from this, uh, from this content, comment, like, share below. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to be sharing some 
new valuable content about what every dieter needs to know about weight loss. So I'm super excited to see you there. I hope you have a fantastic weekend and I'll see you tomorrow.